Hey guys, what's up? It's Depermito. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here in FL Studio and I'm going to be doing the next segment in this series that I've been doing, which is just kind of all the different steps of making a trap beat. So we've gone through melodies, counter melodies, drums, uh, and now we're doing mixing, uh, which is a pretty important part. Um, this is usually the third step um, after making, after I actually make the beat. Uh, I usually go straight to mixing. So this is a beat that I made earlier. It's kind of a Juice World Kid Leroy type beat, and it sounds like this. So yeah, I'm just kind of gonna run through um, how I mixed this. I'm actually gonna just take all of the mixing, all of the, I'm gonna, put it all back to the original levels, take all the effects off, and then I'm just gonna do it again so that you can actually see my process and how I'm thinking about it. Um, so yeah, I'll be right back after I take everything off. All right, so as you can see, the mixer is set back to how it is originally, no effects, everything is at the original levels, and this is just how you're gonna open up the mixer. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just come to your instruments and um, make sure that you can, you just select them like this, press control L and that drops them in the mixer. I've already done that. Um, so yeah, basically the way that I do it is I start with the melody, I solo the first sound and I listen to it. And I see if that needs any effects. So for this, I'm gonna put some halftime on it. Uh, let's see, we got halftime right here. So I'm gonna open this up and Then I'm also going to add a little bit of reverb. And basically, you're just going to go through everything, add effects, see what you want to add. Um, and you're going to kind of get better at this the more that you do it. The more that you use effects and you understand what they do better, the more that you're going to be able to know what you want to add um, and how you want things to sound. So next, let's move on to this piano. I'm also going to ha add half time to this. And a little bit of reverb. And there's a lot of low frequencies, and we don't necessarily want that, so I'm just going to cut that with an EQ right here. That right there sounds good. You don't, when you're EQing things, you don't want to cut so much that it sounds thin or unnatural. Um, but for this, I don't really want to have all of the frequencies in there. Um, so I cut a little bit more than you normally would on something like a melodic instrument. Um, usually you would cut maybe to here or so just to cut out those sub frequencies, but I'm going all the way up to around here. Next we have this ARP. I like how this sounds pretty much. I'm just gonna add a little reverb. And then I've got this guitar. With this, all I'm gonna add is reverb and we're gonna add quite a lot of it. Sounds pretty good. Next, moving on to the drums. With your drums, uh, especially the hi-hat and the clap, you wanna make sure that you have quite a bit of high frequencies. So a lot of times you'll just boost the high end on this little built-in EQ right here to about there. And it's just gonna help it cut through the mix a little bit more. Same thing with the clap. This is all sounding good in terms of effects. Um, so as you kind of add things together and start putting more stuff in at a time, you'll probably notice that you'll need some more effects in certain places. A lot of times I don't end up boosting the highs enough. So when I'm actually leveling everything, I'll notice that and I'll come back boost the highs then. Um, but for this time, I did notice it right there. Um, so you'll, you'll kind of notice that, but generally these are um, gonna be most of the effects that you use. So next what I'll do is come to the 808 and I'll usually put it right around negative six dB. So sort of there and then I'll do the kick. 
Now it's very important that you don't mix by looking at the numbers. You want to mix by look by by listening. You could not be looking at the screen and get a better mix than if you're looking at the decibels and you're going by what everything should be. It, it, there's nothing. There's not a decibel range that it should be because it's it's just subjective. Because all of the different samples are going to have different, uh, you know, different volumes themselves uh, and different perceived loudnesses. So it really just depends on how it sounds. It doesn't depend on the numbers, so don't look at the numbers, except for I always start with the 808 at negative 6 dB because that kind of ensures that you're gonna be generally in a good range on the master if you mix everything to that. So I'll start with the 808, then I'll add the kick and get that to a decent sounding level. And then I'll do the hi-hat. And since we boosted the highs, this hi-hat is cutting through really nicely. Um, so it doesn't need to be brought up too much. It sounds pretty good. Next to the clap. Next, you would add any open hats or perks or rims or whatever. I don't have any of those in this beat because I did quite a little bit on the melody, so I didn't want to do too much in the drums. Um, but next, I'll just come over to this main melody right here and add that. All right, so now that you've got everything leveled, this is the time where we're gonna move on to panning and stereo imaging and all that. Uh, generally, you can just do that with these knobs right here. You might wanna use plugins like Wider or stuff like that, Stereo Shaper, but uh, generally, for the most part, you can just do it with these knobs right here. So this knob is the pan knob, and um, this knob is the stereo and mono knob. So basically, mono, just means that the exact same signal is coming through both sides of the headphones or the speakers or whatever. Stereo, it's separating them. So you can kind of hear if I solo out this bell. So you can probably notice that difference. Um, it is a very big difference. If you're wearing headphones, you probably can. If you're just listening on your phone or whatever, you probably can't. Uh, and it'll be the same thing with panning. So I do recommend listening with headphones or earbuds or whatever, but uh, no big deal really. Um, I generally don't do too much stereo imaging, um, but sometimes in cases like this, where you can see with these patterns, I, live, I uh, layered the piano melody that I have right here onto, so this is the piano melody. I layered it onto this ARP, so it's exactly the same. Uh, so what I might do in this one is pan one a little bit to the left and one a little bit to the right, and that's just gonna help keep it from getting muddy because the exact same thing isn't coming through the same place. It's come, One's coming through the left, one's coming through the right a little bit more. Um, you don't wanna do a hard pan generally where you go all the way. You just wanna do you know, 20, 30%, and that'll generally do the trick. So now you can hear the difference. Right, sounds pretty good, it's less muddy. Uh, and if you're wearing headphones, you can notice that. So um, you can just go through, do that with everything. One thing you do wanna do, kick your 808 or your bass into mono, as well as your kick. That's just gonna help because, you know, I don't really know why, but it's pretty common practice and it just sort of makes it more punchy. And you generally just wanna do that with your low frequencies. If you're doing like a very professional master on a song, you would probably get a frequency, um, you know, a frequency separator, and you would put all of the lows into mono. You don't really need to do that on beats and stuff. You can just put the 808 and the kick into mono, and it'll do the trick. Uh, next, you can um, check your mix in mono. This is just going to help in case you have any phasing issues, which you would only really get from stereo imaging. So since we didn't do any stereo widening or anything like that, this isn't too big a deal, but you can also just check your levels this way, and it kind of helps. So 
So you can kind of hear all of the melodies are kind of mixing and it's a bit muddy. So I'm gonna bring this main melody up a little bit. Like that. Then we can reset this and check that it makes, it still sounds good. It does, and I think I'm gonna bring this arc down a little bit. Maybe this piano as well. We can check it in mono again. And that's sounding good to me. So now we're gonna get to the mastering phase of the beat. Just a little bit of a PSA, don't master beats if they're the actual version that you're gonna sell. Generally, you wanna do two beats. One is gonna be mastered and that's gonna be for streaming. So if you were gonna put it on YouTube or SoundCloud or BeatStars to sell, you would, the streaming file that people actually listen to, that's gonna be the one that you master because it's gonna be louder and it's just gonna kinda of sound better. But the version that people are gonna record on and that's gonna be used in the final song you don't wanna have that mastered because it's just going to clip really hard when they try to master the entire song itself. So you wanna let the beat be mastered with the rest of the song. So this is the beat that's gonna be used to record on and be used in the final song, don't have that mastered. So you might wanna make two versions or you can just make one that's unmastered, but definitely don't only make one that is mastered. Um, so the only way that I do this, it's very simple and it doesn't take too long. I just open up Fruity Limiter. You can use pretty much any limiter you want to. Turn the attack and the release all the way down and then just start bringing up the gain a little bit until it sort of starts to clip. So you can see how I do this. And again, don't even look at this reading right here. Uh, you, you don't really want to, it's not necessary. You just wanna listen and hear when it starts to, when it starts to clip, that's when you wanna kinda of pull it back a little bit. So I'm gonna have this paused so that you don't even look at it because it's not important. Right, so that's kind of sounding crushed. So we're gonna bring it back. And what that does is it just makes it as loud as it can without clipping and without uh, subtracting any frequencies or anything like that. Um, and so we can listen to this real quick. The only downside to this is it is gonna muddy up your mix a little bit because it's gonna kinda crush things together, um, which isn't great, but as long as you don't do it too much, as long as you only give it a little bit, and once you start to hear it crushing things, you pull it back a little bit, uh, you should be fine. You basically just wanna turn up this gain until you start to hear it crush, and then pull it back just a little bit right before it's crushing, and that's gonna be the maximum loudness that you can really get very easily. And that's gonna be fine. So that's pretty much how you mix and master your beats. Um, very, very simple, and it's a great method. This is what I use, um, and yeah. So thank you all for watching, I really appreciate it. Please drop a like and subscribe. When I reach 100 subscribers, I'm dropping a free MIDI kit. You can also check out the 50 subscriber free MIDI kit, which is linked below, or my Instagram 1000 follower free loop kit, which is also linked below. Go follow me on Instagram, by the way, because there's gonna be another one at 2000. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll talk to you in the next video.